Welcome once again to DMA Decision Makers. My name is Neil Moore, and today I'm almost giddy to welcome a man who has the coolest job title I think I've ever heard. He is the Commercial Director and Head of Astronaut Relations at Virgin Galactic. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Stephen, you're Head of Astronaut Relations for Virgin Galactic. Sounds like a fantastic job. What does it actually involve? Well, it is a fantastic job, and uh, I think what it, what it involves at the top level is to make sure that eventually, uh, and hopefully in short measure, that Virgin Galactic is not only the world's first space line, but it's also a commercially successful business. I don't see many astronaut relations jobs advertised. Do you have any unique qualifications for that role? My primary unique qualification was being in the right place at the right time. And, uh, you know, sometimes life's like that. <laughs> I also, I, I have some relevant experience, certainly in terms of business management, maybe understanding the sort of market that we're dealing with. Um, and I think there was a desire on behalf of Virgin to make sure that, you know, we certainly had the technicians, the engineers, the people that will make sure that we have a safe vehicle, but also somebody that could perhaps really focus on, on the commercial aspect. Now, as well as astronaut relations, you're responsible for all marketing and communications around Virgin Galactic. So, how does marketing a space line differ from marketing a more conventional travel and tourism brand? I mean, it's a good question. I mean, so many of the things we've, we're doing have never been done before. Uh, and uh, I suspect I'm, you know, the first person in charge of, you know, marketing for a space line. So um, I, think, I think the way that it differs is that, uh, you know, there's a real thirst for information out there, you know, not just about our product but about the much wider subject of space and space tourism where it's going to go you know how, how how are we going to achieve levels of safety that have never been achieved before and so there's there's a real uh, you know there's a real necessity to educate as well as to market you know virgin is often uh, quoted as a company that does good pr we understand that the relationship with the public you know, is very, very important. And a relationship with the public, like a relationship with, you know, like personal relationships, depends on communication. And so, you know, Richard and Virgin generally have, have tended to tell us to, to announce early, as we did with Virgin Galactic. You know, we announced before we knew a lot of the answers to many of the questions, and then tell the story warts and all. And so it has been a, a, a storytelling exercise. Um, and, uh, and also the management of expectations, because we have a lot of enthusiastic customers. The world is waiting for us to have those first commercial flights. You know, our priority is safety, and so we have to make sure that we are telling people how the project is getting on, you know, that we're pushing it as hard as possible, that, but that we won't cut corners to compromise safety. Virgin Galactic has really embraced social media with an active Twitter feed, Facebook page, YouTube channel, Flickr feed, and LinkedIn group that I found so far. Um, how did you decide which platforms to use? And maybe more importantly, what are you hoping to get out of them? The explosion in social media, which has just happened to coincide with our development, has been heaven sent for us, to be honest. You know, we, uh, we have a, a project here which people find inspirational. You know, it, and uh, when there's inspirational, there's a thirst for information. And you know, never before have you been able to spread that information as effectively and as efficiently and as, as quickly as you can now. You know, and we're, we're making history here. And uh, you know, a lot of what we have already done is, is part of that, that, that history-making story. And so you know, we are very conscious because of what I've said before about, about telling the story, that we tell it as early as we can. So, you know, the, the, the fact that we have Twitter, that we have Facebook, that we have the other, you know, the, the other means of, of getting out to uh, an interested constituency very quickly and very efficiently means that we, you know, the people will know when there's been a successful test flight, you know, minutes after the spaceship has landed. Uh, and that, that, that is fantastic for us. And then we, we, have, we have a community of almost 500 future astronauts now from around the world. Um, and the word community is very important. You know, they come from a lot of different backgrounds, but they have been brought together uh, by the fact that they want to experience space for themselves, and we'll do through that through Virgin Galactic in the, in the near future. And you know, they, they want to get to know each other. They want to share ideas with each other. They want to share ideas with us. Uh, they want to contribute to the way that our product is being developed. Um, they want to go on holiday with each other. They want to develop businesses with each other. So again, you know, having, having the provision of, of uh, what we call Spacebook, but which is normally known as Facebook, <laughs> you know, is, uh, is, is fantastic to, you know, to, to, to really make sure the objectives of that, of that uh, customer community are, are met as, as efficiently as possible. I think that's quite unique 
to Virgin Galactic, though. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, it's probably the most exclusive club on earth. You know, I mean, these these people are. Uh, you know, there's only going to be one opportunity to be the first customers of the world's first space line. And, you know, the experience leading up to the flight is almost as important as the flight itself. And so we have used all the tools at our disposal really to make sure that, uh, you know, our customers feel as engaged as possible with what it is that we're doing on their behalf. This is primarily a channel for marketers. So one of the questions that comes up time and again is about execution of social media strategy. Whose responsibility is it to maintain those platforms? And what kind of editorial process do you apply before publishing a tweet or a status update or a picture or whatever? We have a very small team um, who are based in London at the moment, a uh, very small team. Um, and then we obviously have people uh, at the spaceport. Uh, we have people in Mojave where the spaceships are being built and tested at the moment. Um, and so we, we tend to coordinate th things through London. Um, and so have somebody there that really focuses most of her time on social media and making sure that, you know, that uh, this, again, this, this thirst, this desire for, for knowledge from our customers, but from the wider public is met uh, as efficiently as possible. And we do have a process, you know, I think, I think one of the things you need to be very careful of when there is so much opportunity to, to put so much information out very quickly is that, you know, there is some, some diligence, there is some process that you go through um, you know, just, just, just to make sure that, you know, you're, think, you're thinking through the, uh, the consequences of that information, that it's reported not only in a timely fashion, but that it's accurate, uh, that it's going to the right constituents in, in the right way. Is that person in-house or do you use an external agency? No, in-house. Right across the project, you know, we have a fantastic group within Virgin. And uh, although the Virgin companies are deliberately quite, quite separate entities, um, you know, we talk. And so, uh, the, you know, there's the airlines, the media companies, the telephone companies, the gyms, you know, all, all of them have, uh, you know, have put a lot of thought and work into to, to marketing very different products, but marketing the same brand. And so although we do, uh, you know, the, the actual implementation is done in-house, you know, we, uh, we get together with, with people that are doing similar jobs in other Virgin companies, and we certainly learn from their experience, and hopefully they learn from ours as well. It's often a point of debate about whether or not luxury brands targeted at high net worth individuals, like Virgin Galactic, should even be on social media, that it's not exclusive enough and there's too much wastage in the audience. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. And... I mean, I think for, for two reasons, a, a because, you know, the, one of the, the primary motivations for us uh, establishing a social networking community for our customers was because they told us they would, they would like it to happen. It's also true to say that our market is much wider than just our customer base. You know, the, we, we have, um, I think, about 90,000 people now who have registered on the website saying that, you know, we love this project. We hope to be a customer of yours in the future, maybe when prices have come down a little bit. Uh, and in the meantime, we want to know everything about it. And so, uh, you know, yes, the people that are buying our tickets at the moment, you know, tend to be in that high net worth uh, uh, bucket, if you like, but, um, but our, our, uh, our public is much, much wider. And I think finally, you know, we, we, we are perhaps the sort of the flagship company for the Virgin brand in the 21st century. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we're working hard for the Virgin brand overall in, uh, you know, sort of conveying the excitement and the uniqueness and the history making that uh, is going on within Virgin Galactic. As far as I know, you've not spent any money on traditional media. Obviously, you have a great PR story. Um, but what are the other routes to your highly targeted customer base? Well, you're right. I mean, we, uh, we haven't used any traditional uh, marketing methods. We have to be very conscious that, that, that the vast amount of, you know, the, or the vast percentage, or the largest percentage of money that we have is directed towards making sure we have safe spaceships that are ready to fly as soon as possible. And, you know, so we are in the incredibly fortunate position in that, uh, yes, this is an inspirational project. The media love it. Uh, so we do do a lot of, you know, PR. And again, we use social media to make sure that the messages go out to, to mainstream media, just as they do to our customers and future customers. Um, and we rely very heavily on that. The other thing that we have uh, done is to celebrate milestones. Everybody asks, when are you going to launch commercially? When's the first flight? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you that too, but not until later. And I won't answer it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, what we... 
what we what we can say is the milestones that we need to pass in order to get to that final that final objective. So most recently, uh, we were down in New Mexico, in southern New Mexico, dedicating and naming um, our future home, Spaceport America. And uh, we had, I think, over 200 of our customers down there. We had uh, global media. Uh, we had lots of other VIPs and stakeholders to celebrate that milestone. And the, the purpose of that was to make sure that our customers, you know, recognize that we are keeping our side of the deal, that we're making really steady and tangible progress to their flights, but also to make sure that the press, to be honest, you know, have a chance to, to see uh, how real this project is. And that's what really differentiates us. You know, it's very easy to talk about plans. It's very easy to create animations and websites. You know, to actually build spaceports and build spaceships is much more difficult. And so, uh, you know, we, we want to, I guess we want to use that tangibility. We want to use the, each milestone to say again to everybody, you know, this is, this is happening. Stephen, we're going to call it a day right there. Next time we speak, I'd like to focus a little bit more on uh, your other emerging customer base, which is government, uh, specifically NASA, whom you recently signed a deal with. But for now, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to our next chat. Thank you. For more up-to-date news and views on the Asian digital marketing scene, visit digitalmarket.asia.